In this Debaco University video, Bloom Nutrient Options will be considered when we're looking at cannabis production to give you a better understanding of just what this classification of nutrients is all about. All right, let's get into Bloom Nutrient Options for cannabis production. So first off, the nutrient shift that does occur uh, during the bloom phase. It, the nutrient requirements of cannabis will change as it starts to flower with less demand for nitrogen and more phosphorus and potassium being needed. However, keep in mind this is within reason. You cannot force feed plants high amounts of any nutrient without damage. And just because we're saying it's less demand on nitrogen, does it mean that's no demand on nitrogen? There's no exact ideal ratio of nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium fertilizer, but growers should be careful not to over add nutrients since this can cause damage to the plants. Also, you can continue to use veg or grow nutrients as these are often kept in rotation for the duration of the growing cycle. Simply don't think that just because it says a veg nutrient, you cannot use it during the bloom phase or flowering phase. You might use it to a less extent, but still can be used throughout the entire growing phase of that plant. We want to look at we want to look at fertilizer ratios. When you and the plant are adjusting through the growing cycle, be sure to keep an extra eye on your plants and continue to keep uh, a diligent log of documenting what you fertilize and how much you fertilize. A good starting point is to go uh, with uh, a consideration of a 2 to 1 to 2 ratio during flower, uh, during the grow phase. And then when you're going flipping to that flowering phase, taking those ratios and adjusting them to a 1 to 2 to 1 ratio used in rotation with the, vegeta the vegetative stage formulation during the flowering phase. So what does that mean? It's, it's twice as much nitrogen and uh, potassium as it is phosphorus. And then this is twice as much phosphorus as it is nitrogen and potassium. But this doesn't mean you just completely disregard these, use them in rotation. Where to get these ratios? Well, you look at the guaranteed analysis, and that's giving your nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium. But also keep in mind, many fertilizers are also including a micronutrient blend as well. Now, do not forget about calcium as well. So this is just another nutrient to take into consideration. While the main three primary nutrients are the focus, growers should uh, also be on the lookout for calcium deficiency, as well as this tends to be more common later in the season. Unless you're growing in cocoa coir, where the threat exists during basically the entire growing season, calcium should be kept in mind, particularly at that later phase, that flowering phase of growth of the growth cycle. Lastly, in final flower development, so we're looking at one right here, weeks six, seven, and eight make up the final stages of flowering in most strains. Flowering development is often determined by inspecting the trichomes and tracking basically their change in coloration. As the color change occurs, often growers will reduce and flush their plants with plain water to reduce the amount of salt buildup in the root zone. This will ensure also that there's no fertilizer or residues in the buds, which could impact the final product uh, and taste as well as inspection. So again, that finer flower development as you're nearing that, a couple little things you do at the very end to maximize the quality of your end product.